Alrighty, guys, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, I have got um, a paint party coming up, and I need to get something prepared. So we are gonna we're gonna do that on this video. All right. So it's going to be a Halloween scene. I'm going to work at getting my angle better on my canvas. So when I do do paintings, I, I'll have a better setup. So right now I'm having to use the same um, attachment piece that I use when I do my videos. So just bear with me on this one, guys. I'm going to try and keep this short um, because I'm hoping this is going to be a good beginner painting. I am using acrylic paints. I use the Artist Loft and um, the Phoenix, just different whatever I can kind of get my hands on. And so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to get my, my sky portion in and some of the ground. And I've got to get my black out. I know I have black. Where are you? Um, well, I guess we're going to use Mars black. Not quite as black, but it'll work. All right. So I like to start with a fluffy brush. Um, this is a mop brush. I just find that I get a better blend. After I started working with oils, going back to acrylics is definitely more of a challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my brush a little bit and basically I just dip it in like that. And let me see if I can. And then I squeeze it out. So it's just barely damp, but <laughs> that's what we're going to start with. And I'm just going to start getting some color on the canvas. Now, normally, I would take the time to prime it if I was doing it to sell. But I, I know that I'm only, this is going to be my demo. So I don't really worry too much about getting a, you know, a good base coat down. Which, I mean, it would definitely help, but we're just going to brush that along. I do want to add a little bit of black because this is going to be a moody kind of Halloween-y scene, but I don't want my sky so black that nothing else is going to show up. So I'm just, and then I'll just continue. We're going to go right about three quarters of the way, just past the halfway point. So when you're painting, you don't want to ever cut your painting in half. You either want to have more sky or more land. You don't want them even because it just takes away from the painting. So I'm just going to get that all filled in so that we can kind of let that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to add a little white to my, my um, palette. And I'm, right now I'm just, I'm just kind of using a paper plate, guys. That's all I'm using right now. So I picked up some white and some of that gray. We want the bottom half 
to be a lighter than the top so that we can put some shadows in and you know things will pop out and it's really dry in here so I'm just gonna get a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of help so if you're in a dry warm climate your paints are gonna dry um, quicker if you are in a cool climate you're gonna have a little bit more workable time and right now my room is pretty dang warm because I keep it warm because doing the resin you need to have it warm Oop. and this is why I have paint on everything I own because I am a klutz like you guys know so I have um, saw a few of you in the comments where you were like, oh, that makes me want to get my brushes out. So hopefully this will maybe inspire somebody, you know, to pick up their brush and just do a little scene. This is an 11 by 14. All right. So I'm just going to go back through the top with some of the black and the gray now that that has started because I don't like to see these lines in there so we're just gonna lightly put another coat over you can totally dry it use your um, a hair dryer I personally like to paint wet on wet so so this time I did, I picked up a little bit of white too, just to give a little bit of something into the sky. So I'm just going to dip it in some water just so we can kind of blend that paint down a little better. And I do complete brush strokes across my canvas so that you don't end up with those like marks like that. So if you go all the way across that alleviates that all right so I'm just gonna wash my brush off and don't leave your brushes sitting in your water guys because it will break down the glue in the ferrule that holds your um, your brush bristles on so clean it and then so I'm not going to worry too much about this because we're going to be putting stuff in front. <laughs> so I will go ahead and dry this real quick, a little bit, not 100%. So I do want to put a, a moon somewhere up in here, but I don't know where yet, so... So this is the hardest part right here is when I do a paint party is when they paint their background, depending on how thick they go with their paint, takes forever for them to dry. So that's the longest and the hardest part. All right. So I am going to get me a filbert brush and... This one has got something on it. All right, so I guess we'll use this one. And I need to get more black. Oh crap, you know what I didn't do? I wanted to add some blue into, the, into that top. So let me, <coughs> I dipped it in blue and gray just to kinda give that um, that kind of night sky but still not having it be <laughs> and I need more gray like I don't want it to turn blue blue but I don't want it to be um, 
so dark that it makes for a dark painting. I do want to have, so that when I put the trees and stuff, you know, we'll just have that moody background, basically. And that's too much blue. Just going with some more gray. So it's just gonna give it kind of like a gray, blue sky. And leave your top a little bit darker than down here. <coughs> All right. I think that looks better. You know, and at this point, I kind of leave it up to the person painting it if, you know, they want to leave it gray or blue. I, you know, if they want to change their colors, I totally am fine with that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to wet this brush and I'm going to stick it in the black. And I might be finding another brush because this one is kind of thick. <laughs> All right, so we definitely want some like background trees. So I'm going to start on the side over here and just kind of just tap in a line and then kind of go sideways. Like I said, this brush might be a little, yeah, I'm gonna get a different brush. I've got to buy some new brushes, guys, since this, um, That is the one thing that I'm like really, really getting low on is my brushes. I tried this one. This is a little bit, this is a brand new one. So whenever you have a brand new brush, always wet it first to rinse off any of the kind of the residue. All right. So I'm just going in, I'm just putting paint on the tip. See how skinny I have my brush? much better. And then I just kind of tap side to side. And you don't even have to put the line in. I do it when I'm doing my classes just so that it makes it a little bit easier for to people to visualize like where where I'm going to have this tree. And see we're gonna put a little bit bigger one right here you know when you can leave some open spots you always want it bigger towards the bottom you want it flat out a little bit more because that's how a tree would naturally go And then we're just gonna do like some different sizes. And they can lap over the other ones. Um, maybe we're gonna have this one kind of doing a lean. It's a little bit crooked. You know, cause they don't all grow straight and nature so and if even putting in no line you can still get your tree effect it just depends on like everybody's own style so let's see let's put something over here 
and I'm gonna have some big trees in front of these. This is just kind of getting some of that background. And then I'm gonna just pull some little grassy shadows underneath these all right now so I wet my brush that way I can get that little bit of um, streakiness because I don't like that in my paintings all right so let's see. <clears throat> it's almost dry enough to put my moon in here. All right, so I'm going to put some more trees um, down in here. And these this one's going to be bigger because it's going to be closer. And then once we add a little bit of highlights on them, Let's see, we'll have another one here. And I'm just going right over those other trees. All right. So, I'm gonna rinse my brush and let's get um So, I want to start putting in like some kind of tombstones and stuff like that. I will be having a big tree like a big scary branch tree, probably like one here going up and then one going over this pine tree or evergreen or whatever it is. Um, we might even put one in here in the back. So right now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna put some like little gravestones. So you can make them arched, you can make them crosses. It's, it just depends on what you want. Some smaller ones down. And this one here, I'm using my brush on an angle. And then just to make different shapes is basically all we're doing. Um, we just want to get something in that represents kind of what we're putting in and let's see <laughs> put one here 
And you notice I picked a lighter spot so that when I put the shadow in, it will pop forward. And let's see, we're gonna make this one a little bit different. He's gonna have like a little cross. And then we will arch this one. down and then we will bring it across and we'll bring that down <clears throat> and then we'll just color it in And then once we get the moon in there, then we can decide where our moon shadow side is going to be. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna have some sort of a path that's gonna come out to an open fence. Right now, we're just wanting to get our little tombstones in. You could even use a liner brush if you wanted for this part. Or you could use a chalk pencil and, and kind of draw them in. Say, like, if I used my, um, my chalk pencil... I could say, we're just gonna make a flat stone right here. And that's kind of on the ground. So you could chalk it in and then you just paint over it. So there's all kinds of different ways to that now see how these ones are like they're more in the distance they lightened up a little bit okay so let's get our our big um tree let's see where is where is my favorite line of brush Maybe we'll use this one for the trunk. All right, so I want a tree like in the back of these. So let's go ahead and get that in now. So, and I rest my pinky on my canvas a lot. You'll see me do that a lot on my acrylic paintings. Said. I don't want that one to be too big because that one is a little further away, but I am going to wet down some of the black paint so that it's really thin and I'm going to roll my brush into it to do the smaller limbs coming up. And if you don't have enough paint, it's not going to flow the way you want it to. And just remember, the part that touches the tree is always going to be much thicker than any of the other branches.
and you don't want to put all your branches, you know, the same way. This is where you really can just kind of make whatever you want. You don't want to put even amounts because you don't want them to look like they're like fingers. And don't be afraid to cross over your branches. So as you go into the, the trunk, you press a little harder and as you're going off, you're letting up. And I got to thicken this one. can have like a little broken piece sticking out. And I always like to have one limb at the bottom. I don't know why that is just kind of my signature thing I like. All right, so that's going to be good enough for there. And All right, so if we put our moon here, I'm trying to think where I want my my bigger tree. Um all right, let's let's keep going on our um so I'm going to pick up some of the blue and some of the black and I just want to kind of give a little bit of like a shadow kind of underneath Let's get some sort of a pathway going in here. So let's see. And your pathway, you always want it smaller at the end um, and bigger as it comes out. Um, <laughs> do I want to do that or... We could put some pumpkins in here too, which would be kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's take some black and some white and let's put in some sort of trail here. Not a trail, but just path into the whatever this is it's the spooky yard and I barely have any paint on my brush guys basically doing the the dry brush technique right here So it just kind of shows like, you know, you can get in there. All right. So let's put a few more little tombstones in the back. I mean, this is where you can, um, you know, put as many or as little as you want. You know, 
like this one kind of goes off the canvas a little bit. <coughs> you know, I just found out yesterday that I was doing this and I've got to have her, the image, um, and a flyer made up by tomorrow. So yeah, um, I was kind of like, oh no, I'm panicking here. All right, so let's do a bigger one because now they're getting closer to us. You know, and they don't have to be perfect because they're old and wood and, um, let's see. All right, so I think that's going to be good for our tombstones. <coughs> so now we've got to get something into this like grayish area here. So let me... <laughs> What are we going to use? I'm going to use a little flat, a little scrub brush type of thing. Um, so we're just going to tap it in some of the gray, some of the white, and we're just going to And I'm just barely touching and running that up. So where this side is lighter on the ground, I'm definitely going to put the moon over here. Um, and I guess I'm just going to scrub some more dark into this ground. I'm not liking the way this one's looking over here. And then I can just go back through with some, just want to get, you know, some of that darkness in, in and around there. And that way it shows like there is some dirt there, but it's just not all. Because then once we add some like little pretend writing on these tombstones, <coughs> it should start coming together here. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to get our moon in and I don't want my moon to be very big. So I'm going to use a small filbert brush and I'm going to take a little bit of the gray. Let me see here. So a little bit of the gray and the blue and the white. And I'm just going to put it on one side of my brush and I am going to push it, push it on the canvas like this, and then just spin this brush right around. There you go. So it's an easy way to get a circle without having to draw a circle. And then I can take just a little bit more white and just kind of dab it in there so that we have 
the bearing. And if you go out, then your moon just grows a little bit. and just kind of tap it out. It's kind of like that. <clears throat> and then once it dries, I can go and put it a little bit brighter in the middle. But now we know that our, all of our highlights are gonna be going this way. So that makes it a little bit easier. And I'm not going to use pure white because it's, yeah, I don't think it's going to look good. But we are going to get some pumpkins in right now. So I'm just going to take a round brush and I am going to get, mm, let's see, we'll just use an orange. We're going to use some sort of a brown. All right, use some burnt umba. So what I do is as I'm pulling my colors out, I'm putting them up here so that when I get ready to pull my colors for my paint party, I know which colors I used. And then I can just look at the painting and say, okay, well, I only used a very little bit of the brown, so I'll just give them a little dot, you know. So that's kind of how I do it. So I'm going to take the brown and the orange and get like, um, like a dirty orange color. And let's make a smaller one back here. So it's almost like a heart at the top. You know, like you really, it's it's there, but it's it's not. Cause as we come closer, the, the pumpkins are gonna get a little bit, a little bit bigger. I do need to mix up some more though. All right. Put a bigger one right in here. You know, and you don't you don't want a perfect circle. They're pumpkins, they're in a spooky yard. <clears throat> so right now we're just putting these like little circle things in. <coughs> And this one will probably be our biggest, most visible pumpkin. And if you can, try to do odd number when you're putting things in. Because it just makes the painting more appealing. All right, and then we're gonna take the brown and we're just gonna put a stem at the top. Well, not a stem, but you know what I mean. The, the thingy ding that, you, uh, that the pumpkins grow on. All right. So I'm going to go back to my little liner brush and we're going to start putting a little bit of grass, like black grass. Just a little bit throughout, just to kind of, you know, this is a walkway. There's, there's obviously something growing somewhere. <laughs>
You know, and just remember, there's there's no wrong in painting. You do it. If you don't like it, you paint over. You just you start again. <clears throat> And the lighter the pressure that you put, the more thin your lines are going to be. And you don't want them all going the same way. All right, so let's put some little scary little faces on these. So this one I'm just going to... Just gonna put like two eyes and a nose in that one because that's like in the distance. And let's see, this one, maybe we'll make him have some little triangly. <laughs> and let's see. And we're just going to give him a scary mouth. And something like that. Just make some weird shapes. Not a big deal. Now this one we have to do a, you have to make a little bit more um, actually I skipped the step guys which I can I can touch them up because um, I want to add some some lighter like pumpkin color to them so that they stand out a little bit more. All right. Come on, paintbrush, cooperate here. And I can just put his face back in after. Just you want some light and some dark in your pumpkin is what you want. little bit better. Let's round him off a little bit more. Yeah. All right. That works. So let's just put some little scary something back there. And shadow that way there he's you know you have him sitting kind of in the dirt so I'm just taking some black blue and the gray and kind of, and then use your finger to smear it out. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. <laughs> so now we've got to get a little bit of highlight going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use just the gray to add some highlight from our, where our moon's coming through. So you would have, you know, just some areas. You, you don't have to do all of it. You 
you know, definitely right in there. You, it would, you know, you would see some. Across the top. You know, maybe right in this area here. <clears throat> and it's it's in the distance, so you you really don't need like a lot of highlights, but a little bit will just kind of help have it stand out a little bit. And then I'm going to take this and we're going to kind of give it some on one side. You know, obviously the top would would have some color and maybe the front of that stone would have a little something shining from the moon oh. and hopefully I'm not in the way that you guys can see This one. Kind of like a little double one. So this is kind of where we start, you know, making them 3D looking. You know, like this one here might not have any shadows on it because it's being covered by these trees. Um, and then on these ones, it would be on the opposite side if there was a little bit of a, a shadow. So you always want to think about where your moon is, um, you know, as to what side is going to be being visible. Um, all right, so now I'm just gonna I mean it you it's you know all imaginary you're just putting like there's words or something on it. And if you have a bigger one, you know, like these that you could see a little bit better, you could put like RIP or, you know. All right, so let's. I put 10, 12 for a date. It doesn't have to be really visible. Just something that just shows that, you know, there is something on there. And let's see. And 
Yeah, put lost soul on that. I mean, you can you can just go crazy. <clears throat> um <laughs> Best. All right. So now I'm going to take my, go back to my filbert brush and I'm going to take a little bit of the gray with a smidge of that white in it. Just a little bit and just a little bit of paint. And we're just going to start adding just a little bit of, a little tiny bit of highlights to these trees. You know, obviously this tree here is going to have more because it's closer, it's in the front. And then we can put push those other trees back. And, and we don't need them all, you know, with highlights on them. Just, just wanna get a little something. You know, like this one's right like under the moon, so this one might be a little bit more illuminated. <clears throat> you know, obviously the, the top of this big tree would definitely have some highlights. And you need you need the light and dark in order to make things stand out. And if you go too light, just go back in with some more of the black and All right, so now we need one more big tree. And I think we're gonna put it, maybe we'll, so if you have a tombstone that you don't like, then that's where you would put your bigger tree. Um, but I like all of mine. I like, um, all right. So, so I don't know if I want my friend, my fence in front of or behind the tree. <clears throat> so. Maybe I'm not going to put a bigger, another big tree. I know what I'll do. All right. Instead of putting in another tree, because I like, I kind of like this setup, I'm going to have some branches coming in. So I'm just going to pick up the black paint. I'm going to flatten my filbert brush out. And and we will have it coming. Just, just bring it down. 
right in. And let's see, we're gonna just bring it down even more. We're just, we'll lose that one. So, <clears throat> now, we figured a spot for our Or a big monster tree. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to switch to a small liner brush. And you can bring it around the top of the canvas or Thin my black down here. And I'm just going to fill that in there. All right. Oh, yeah. So now I'm just going to go in with the gray. I'm not even going to bother to clean my brush. And we're just going to kind of get some highlights going. And if we put the highlights in front, then it just kind of pushes those little branches back. So it's coming out in the back. You know, and more of this tree would have it because it's bigger. So you just want to get some going in there. And the more you don't think about it, the better that it works. If you just start 
getting some color in there. thinking this top branch would be getting some of that moonlight. And then you can always even take some gray and just add a few other branches just to give a variety of in some some blue some gray and some black just to kind of give a little bit of variety brush and we're gonna smooth smooth that out So when I have them do it, I will have them get their ground in way better than what I did here. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go, and we're just gonna kinda add some more light in. We're gonna put a face in here and let's see, I gotta get some more definition in this path here. I kinda of took that out. Add some brown. Out of a little bit lighter. All right. So now, what brush am I going to use? Is going to be the key. Let's try this one. <clears throat> So I'm just going to go in with the black and we're going to put a 
fence post here. And so it just tells you it's going that way. And then over here. they'll pretty much be the same size because we're kind of looking at it face on. And then let's put some little cross pieces. And we'll put the bottom one. I mean, you could made, you know, you could have made this brown or whatever, but it's kind of like a night scene. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the gray and on the tops of your post, just put a little bit of white, well, the gray, and same thing on in In my brush here. Yeah, I got too much. And a little bit on the tops on this side. Let me clean my brush. And this one wouldn't really have a, sh I guess it would be on this side. Just so it'll show up. <coughs> All right, so let's put our little spooky face and I think we're done. So orange and brown. Nope, I did the pumpkin already. Hang on. Black. That's what I want. Black. All right. So. A little, a little shadow on the top and there we have it guys oh and I did say I was going to put a little bit more white in the moon 
now that it's dry. So I'm just gonna, just a little bit, and I'm just going to swirl that around like that. And there we have it. Got our little, a little scary scene. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. It was a little different, but this is what I've been doing for three years is painting. So when I switched over to um, doing the epoxy, it was a nice change, but I'm starting to miss, you know, my paintings. So let me, um, I don't know why it looks grainy. I will take a close-up photo and put it at the end of this video, guys. Alrighty. Thanks for hanging with me.